It's time. It's time once again to take a journey. So turn on the lights, pull your chair up, get a little closer to the computer, and get ready, because the journey's about to begin. You turn your radio on, and there it is. A faint station, wafting in and out of the static of the night. A man named Eric, running a show called The Midnight Cafe, calls to you. The conversation seems strange at first, but as you listen, as his voice fades in and out of the static, you realize this is where you were meant to be. This is what you were meant to listen to. We will take a journey that takes us from the normal, well, all the way through to the paranormal and beyond. We'll talk about the knowns and the unknowns and everything in between. And together, perhaps we'll make a little sense out of this crazy world we all live in. Welcome. Welcome, my friends, to another episode of The Midnight Cafe. I'm your host, Eric, and we have an interesting show lined up for tonight. I hope you'll install Skype or Zoom and join the conversation. But for right now, we move on to more pressing things. We move on to the news. And what an interesting night for news it is. First up, Oklahoma. Maybe not anymore, Oklahoma. They might want to rename it now that they've lost over half of their land mass. That's right, due to a Supreme Court ruling, Oklahoma has lost half its land mass. It has reverted back to an Indian reservation, and it has sparked a firestorm of debate as many, many cases open up of Indians who have been wrongfully arrested, apparently, by state authorities when they had no jurisdiction because they were now on reservation land. The Supreme Court decision has a ripple effect that will definitely, definitely cause problems for months and years to come, not the least of which is hardened, convicted felons of very serious crimes being set free Expect that to be inbound within a month or so. And more than that, the hundreds and hundreds of cases that are now being filed as we speak across the country as other Indian reservations attempt to reclaim lost land. The ruling, nothing short of basically voiding the idea that to the victor go the spoils. They're claiming in there, not claiming, they have (laughs) ruled that The Indians signed a treaty for land and that the United States did not hold them, hold up their end of the bargain. And so the Supreme Court is now holding up their end of the bargain for them. So that reverts that land mass back to them. Definitely an interesting, interesting story. Amazingly, zero, very little coverage on, uh, well, what we pretend to be real news here in America. But this is something you should definitely do some research on if you live in Oklahoma or you live in an uh, area of the uh, country that has some of these uh, forgotten or uh, mistreated treaties. You might want to look into it because you might wake up tomorrow and realize you're living on the reservation, my friend. Very interesting story indeed. In political news, Roger Stone, longtime friend of Donald Trump, has been given a, uh, it's not a pardon, it's a, He's been granted clemency. He's basically, yes, he's guilty of whatever crime they committed, but uh, he is not going to serve a day in jail. Donald Trump had kind of telegraphed that uh, that was coming. So it's interesting to see it play out. A lot of people on the left uh, outraged, as you can imagine, and a lot of people on the right uh, saying it's long overdue, that it was a uh, you know witch hunt uh, they were going after, trying to get more information on the now debunked Russian collusion hoax. Interesting story as well. Roger Stone, a political figure here in the United States, uh, dating back into Nixon era. So this guy's been around. He certainly has, I'm sure, dirty hands. But uh, in this case, Roger Stone is uh, a free man once again. So good for him. Hopefully he manages to stay out of trouble for his retirement. But, uh, well, knowing Roger Stone, he probably won't. Continuing with political coverage, this one, I'm not sure what to make of this one. It's been kind of quiet since the first announced, but Kay West, or Kane West, Kane West, Kay West, I can't pronounce his first name, but Mr. West has uh, apparently announced a presidential bid. As some of you may remember, uh, Mr. West came out as one of the few uh, supporters of Donald Trump from the 
musicians and actors and actresses that generally align with leftist policies, he stood out. In fact, some questioned his mental stability at the time, but a very wealthy man, and if he's serious, I wish him the best of luck. He is an interesting character. His take on a lot of current events does interest me, to be honest with you. A lot of people want to laugh this subject off, but uh, I think uh, he's a little late to the party, but if, uh, you know what, uh, Jesse, the, Jesse the Body Ventura, or Jesse the Mind Ventura, was a zero-budget late entry to the Minnesota governor field, and look how it worked out for him. So there's always that possibility. Um, I wish him the best. I would love to see him up on the debate stage. I think that would be a, a great thing for the nation to have a fresh perspective like that. I, I'm a firm believer that all independent candidates should be on those debate stages. You know, Joe Jorgensen, I think, is uh, running for the Libertarian Party, and uh, I think she has a right to be up there as well. So it remains to be seen if... If he was serious, he, he says he's serious, but I have not, as of the time of the shooting of this uh, of this episode, I have not found a K West for President website, so I have had uh, no way of verifying his platform other than other than a, a few cryptic tweets and one interview. So, very interesting time to be alive here in America. So we'll definitely be keeping an eye on that, and it certainly shakes up the presidential field in an already shaky year. Lastly, we go back to the global catastrophe that uh, plagues America and the world, and we see numbers increasing across America, some talk of reclosing uh, schools and uh, going back to what they call phase one. Remains to be seen how this plays out, but it certainly has become a political issue as well. One said, uh, one side saying reopen and the other side saying reclose. Uh, it would be interesting to see how this as well plays out. But for right now, the numbers speak for themselves. Uh, massive increases across the board. Uh, but the death rate, uh, gladly going down, happily going down amongst all age groups. So that's good to know. It's going to be a long winter, my friends. We're going to go to a song, and when we come back, it'll be time to get into our main topic. We'll be discussing demons that's right, demons this week. Not just in the religious sense by far. We're going to be talking about demons from a paranormal sense, from a pagan sense, and from a religious sense. I hope you will install Google. Uh, well, let's see, we have Zoom is now available, as well as Skype, and just installing one or more of those. And I'd love to have you as part of the show when we get to that point. But for right now, again, enjoy some music, and we'll be back right after this. get into tonight's main topic i do want to take a minute to thank everyone for listening 21 years 21 years on the air here at the midnight cafe starting off as a small pirate radio station just outside of raleigh north carolina 1670 wasted radio and progressing over 20 years to both am channels fm channels overseas channels internet channels heck we're even on shoutcast it's been a long run, been a lot of good times, a lot of good friends made, but I'll tell you something, I wouldn't trade it for the world, my friends, I wouldn't trade it for the world. 
Tonight's main topic, demons. The biblical monsters, pagan slaves to the devil, ghostly apparitions that can haunt our souls. Demons conjure up a lot of thoughts right off the bat, a lot of strange feelings and visions. Throughout the course of our history, but not just our history, but ancient history as well, every culture out there has at least some explanation for a demon. And in a minute, we'll go to some stories, personal stories and public stories about demonic possessions, demonic visitations, and some theories as to what exactly it is that a demon is. Hope you enjoy the show. In about another 15, we'll open up the lines and I hope you call in because I'd like to get your opinion on what exactly it is that a demon is here on the Midnight Cafe. A demon is a supernatural being, typically something associated with evil, prevalent historically in religion, occultism, literature, fiction, mythology, and folklore that now spreads into video games, media, movies, and such. The original Greek word, Damien, does not carry any negative connotations. Ancient Greek denotes the spirit as some kind of divine power, much like a Latin genius. The Greek concept of a demon, though, notably appears in the works of Plato, where it describes divine inspiration of Socrates. Isn't that an interesting thought? Socrates, controlled or driven by demons. In ancient Near Eastern religions and in Abrahamic traditions, including the ancient medieval Christian demonology, a demon is considered a harmful spiritual entity which may cause demonic possession, calling for an exorcism. Interesting stuff, isn't it? This is coming right from Wikipedia here, but I just want to give a little backup to this. Now, the ancient Egyptians, uh, their demons can be divided into two classes, guardians and wanderers. The guardian demons, well, they were tied to a specific place, say a temple or whatnot, and their demonic activity was confined to those areas. The guardians, on the other hand, were protectors of these places. So in Egyptian culture, guardians, I'm sorry, demons, guarded these sacred palaces. But the wanderers, on the other hand, they're associated with possession, death, plagues, mental illnesses. These are the bad guys. Many of them serve as executioners for major deities such as Ra or Osiris. And when ordered to punish humans or in the netherworld, wanderers can be great agents of chaos arising from the world from beyond and creating misfortune and suffering. Very interesting. So even the Egyptians were looking at these demons, these deities, and even classing them as, as uh, poltergeists, perhaps, when they talk about something that was contained within a building, as opposed to a wanderer who was, uh, well, more like a conventional demon we think of today, a monster that gets into your soul and causes you mayhem. Looking back even farther, we go into Mesopotamia, you know, the Sumerians. I mean, this is literally where our history begins. Ancient Mesopotamians believed that there was an underworld that was home to many demons. Isn't it interesting, no matter what the culture, so many similarities exist in our religions and our cultures. The underworld, the heavens, the angels, the demons, the fallen ones. I always find this stuff to be so interesting. Now these many demons, which are sometimes referred to as the offspring of Arali. Now again, remember, Mesopotamians, these, these, the Sumerians, the original culture, they believed that they were literally creations of aliens. And there were a whole race of aliens that the Anunnaki, and these aliens got into an argument with each other. And so we had the fallen ones, the ones that ended up underneath, the fallen angels. Again, think to Christianity. We have our angel, we have the fallen angel, the dark one himself, who was just an angel from above, from the heavens, but did wrong and ended up being banished down to the underworld. So, so many similarities between so many different cultures. Now we have Egyptian and Mesopotamia both referring to these demons. And these going farther, which is interesting because it's an older, older religion to be following into Christianity so closely. But these demons sometimes could leave the underworld in Mesopotamia and terrorize mortals here on earth. Again, demons, 
opening portholes and coming into our world. One class of demons that were believed to reside in the underworld were known as the Gala. Their primary purpose appears to have been to drag unfortunate mortals back into the darkness. Interesting. So we had a certain type of demon that literally dragged you to hell. A very frightening thought indeed. These are frequently referenced in magical texts. and Some of the texts describe them being seven in number. So when these demons would arrive in as ancient Mesopotamia, they came in a group of seven. Something to think about there. And finally, we move to Christianity. The Old Testament refers to these uh, demonic entities as two classes, the satyrs, or shaggy goats, and the demons. So we have two types here. The shaggy goats also refer to as hairy beings, he goats, or fawns. Now let me tell you, where I, one of the places I grew up anyway, uh, there was a beautiful wooded area not many miles away that was had something, and I can't remember if it was the Devil's Triangle or the Devil's Playground or whatever it was called, but supposedly a half-man, half-goat lived in those woods and would torture and destroy people who came near him and and i actually had an experience where i saw a creature in the woods uh, not not in that exact area but nearby that was an unexplained creature so to me i find that to be very interesting but the term demon came from that greek diamond appears over 63 times in the new testament of the christian bible most if not all are related to occurrences of possessions and exorcism being performed by Jesus. Very interesting stuff there as well. So we start to see as we move forward in time, people specifically referring to demons as something that get into a good person or a person and then control them. And here we go with Genesis. And, and this, again, this show is not really a religious show, so I hope you understand I'm trying to cover multiple religions. But the Genesis one in particular, which is the flood narrative, which in another episode will cover the fact that almost all religions have a flood story in their past and so it becomes more and more evident that from different perspectives at one point or another on this earth there was a massive flood no matter what religion you believe anyway in this genesis not a part of the bible the flood narrative which explains how god was noticing how corrupt the earth had become for all the people on earth had become corrupted in their ways and the sin of men were attributed to the unclean demons who began to lead astray the children of the sons of Noah and to make air and destroy them. We all know how that story ends. <laughs> so in order to purge the earth of these evildoers and the people who had become followers of them, the flood came. And lastly, sources of these demonic influences, which were thought to originate from the Watchers or the Nephilims, which are first mentioned in Genesis, the Nephilim were seen as a source of sin and evil because they were referred to in Genesis of the story before the flood. God sees the evil in the heart of men, the passage states. The wickedness of humankind on earth was great, and that every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only continually evil. The mention of the Nephilim in the preceding sentence connects the spread of evil to the Nephilim, the fallen ones, the fallen angels. Enoch is a very similar story to Genesis and provides even further description of the story connecting the Nephilim to the corruption of humans. In Enoch, sin originates when angels descend from heaven and fornicate with women, birthing giants as tall as 300 cubits. The giants and the angels depart of heaven, and mating with human women are also seen as a source of sorrow and sadness on earth. The book of Enoch shows that these fallen angels can lead humans to sin through direct interaction or through providing forbidden knowledge. In Enoch, Semayaz leads the angels to mate with men and women. Angels mating with humans is against God's commands and is a cursed action. This results in God coming to earth. Aziel has indirectly influenced humans to sin by teaching them divine knowledge not meant for humans. And as he brings down these stolen, stolen minute, uh, mysteries and gives them to the humans, he gives them then weapons so that the humans may kill each other. Humans are also taught other sinful actions such as beautification techniques, alchemy, astrology, how to make medicine, computer, <laughs> and demons originate from the evil spirits of the giants that are cursed by God to wander the earth. These spirits are stated in Enoch to be corrupt, fail to be excited, and fall upon the earth to cause sorrow. Very scary stuff, my friends. This is the topic of tonight. Very shortly, I want to open up 
the lines and get your opinions on what it is that a demon is. Are we looking at fallen angels? Are we looking at aliens? Are we looking at manifestations of human emotion that somehow get out of our souls, get out of our bodies, and can attack and possess the bodies of the weak or the timid or the slaves to humanity? I'm Eric. This is the Midnight Cafe. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, I will open up the lines and we'll talk some more. All right, guys, how's it going tonight? Hopefully everybody's doing all right. I know this has been a very interesting show so far. Actually, been very disappointed with the amount of live viewers, but that's all right. Hopefully we'll catch it on the reruns. Dallas is chiming in. Very interesting topic. I'm more familiar than most, probably. My dad has been a godly man and a pastor for 55 years. Very cool, my friend. Definitely love to get your opinion on this stuff. So, demons, you know... Um, I am a, an amateur historian, but I really enjoy the fact that uh, you can go into so many different religious backgrounds or just cultural backgrounds and see references to these creatures or these things, these entities, these bad luck that befalls man and, uh, and see the similarities, which leads me to believe that what we're dealing with is something that's real. It's, it's something that maybe we haven't have the definitive proof we look for in this world, but it's certainly something that has had enough play on this earth to have been witnessed by pretty much all cultures. Wandering Jedi is chiming in, saying demons are just fallen angels who rebelled against God and can appear in many different ways as different entities to deceive. The Nephilim were just the offspring of angels who were destroyed. Okay, so you're saying the fallen angels that they bred, it wasn't the uh, the Anunnaki that bred with them, so the Nephilim are the offspring of the unholy meeting of humans and uh, the angels. Man. <laughs> Dallas saying he's heard so many sermons on in the pew. I hear that, my friend. And again, this isn't really a religious show, but a lot of the topics that we cover certainly intertwine with religions and not just Christianity. I am not a, uh, I'm not very familiar with Muslim culture, but I certainly know a lot about a lot of other religions. And, uh, and again, and not just religions, but just history in general. And this demon theory comes up over and over and over again. So in some cultures, what we see are literally entities that exist, at least somewhat on the plane. But I, I more often in modern era, like when you see references to demons, um, you see demonic possession. You know, I will think back to the uh, movie the exorcist demonic possession someone is possessed and i myself and i know obviously i don't believe in people you know their heads turning 360 and throwing up all over the place i don't believe in that sort of thing or at least i've never seen it with my own eyes other than on a you know in the movies but i wonder about um demonic possession as in like weakened souls weakened spirits people who are just they give up on life um one of the theories that we had is that uh, if, and this was a friend of mine that I worked with, both of us had shared a similar experience when we were talking one day about uh, the ramifications of those experiences. And I brought forth the idea that perhaps when people die and are brought back, that sometimes maybe their souls don't always come back with them. Because we were talking about how sometimes people change uh, after those near-death experience or where they do die temporarily or momentarily. So it's uh, it was a thought that you know does the absence does does death even temporary death when we leave our bodies and float above the room 
does that allow something else to get in some other spirit, some other entity, some other consciousness? And that if that is a possibility, because there's, there's a lot of stories online about that sort of thing happening that not, not the, not the near death part of it, but just that, that these things happen, that they can get into you. Drug addicts, for instance, uh, a lot of times, um, appear to, you know, they'll, they sell out their families and their friends and their loved ones and everything, and they'll just do anything for that next hit and, and to break down all the walls of morality in order to, uh, get their hands on drugs. Is that not like, uh, in a way something getting inside of them that has weakened their spirit, weakened their soul to where, uh, they're willing to, you know, rob people, kill people, uh, stab people in the back, that sort of thing. And so, uh, another curious thought, but, the lines are open. Let me go ahead and change the picture up here so it has the uh, address. But we, I was not able to get Zoom working, and, and I don't really, maybe it wasn't that great a fan of actually using Zoom anyway um, because of they, you know, they're a Chinese company, and, and uh, there's some issues with whether maybe they are um, state-run, so it could be, could be kind of an issue there, so... But I wanted to offer another way because so many people uh, to come into the show and they're not able to get on Skype to call in. So yeah, it is what it is. I tried anyway, guys. Uh, Wandering Jedi saying yes, sir, on that. So right on there. Wes Raz, are they virus characters in the code? It can fry you uh, anytime with spontaneous combustion. Interesting. Interesting. So you're thinking about the, uh, the uh, possibility that we're living in a simulation and these are some sort of virus that infects us in that sense. Kelsey is saying reprobate minds. Mm -hmm. uh, Wandering Jedi asking pe folks to hit the like button. Certainly, please, if you are enjoying the show. You know, we don't charge anything here. And we don't get paid here because it's not monetized. So this is just for fun. But uh, if you enjoy it, uh, let me know that you enjoy it. Again, I'm a little disappointed. Last week we had, you know, 30 to 50 uh, people on, on it at any one time. And we're really low tonight, at least on my end. It's showing less than a dozen, so... Not not too cool, considering uh, I actually gave some <laughs> so a little bit of a warning this time around. But I think eBay or YouTube has not been uh, very kind lately. They've been burying some content, so that's unfortunate. But the lines are open if you want to call in. Uh, I'm on Wiki, brushing up on demons right on Super B. Like I said, if you want to join in at some point or if you feel uncomfortable talking about it. In Dallas, if you want to bring um, your father's religious uh knowledge <laughs> in through your voice we'd love to hear it and that goes for the rest of you as well i know that skype is uh, kind of an antiquated software program but uh, no cameras tonight just um just just the voice man my friends just the voice dallas saying until you've seen an evil spirit manifest manifest itself through someone at a church service type environment you can't grasp how real the battle is between good and evil Man, uh, so you're talking maybe not full-fledged um, exorcism, but something along those sides where people just show their inner self. And and I'll be honest with you, I had some low points in my life where uh, I've felt that that evil creeping into my life, and uh, and I don't know if that was a demon or just um, the weakness that allows those things to exist or come into our lives. But very interesting stuff. Hey, seven forty-one, good to see you in there, my friend. Uh, tonight we, you know, you can always go back and listen to the first bit, but we're talking about demons and we're not, you know, I have more of a religious aspects or knowledge about them, but we're talking about like how many different cultures refer to demons in some way or another. And not just, you know, religions, but cultures themselves dating back to some of our earliest, uh, earliest history, recorded history, the, uh, the uh, Anunnaki and the Nephilim and, and uh, so we're going way back to the Sumerians. And so it's been an interesting night so far. I hope people are enjoying the show. But yeah, so there's also the other thing, like, you know, when we talk about poltergeist, which we touched on briefly in our last episode. Um, well, no, actually, I guess that was, yeah, we talked about that either in the last episode or maybe it was last season, but the, 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 is it a, is that a demon, uh, and you know, that has gotten into somebody or is that a, a spirit on its own? That's not attached to people. Cause some people think that the poltergeist activity is tied to an individual. Is that a, a demon that's either attempting to get in or that has get in and is using his power or her power or its power, whatever. 
Uh, Wandering Jedi is commenting when people uh, get on hard drugs, play with Ouija boards, involve themselves in spiritualism, they open the door to evil entities. Whereas if you're strong in faith and rely on God, they cannot possess. So indeed, it's uh, others like you're talking about Ouija boards, and um, and I don't know if I've talked on this in the show, but when I was in, I think the seventh grade or eighth grade, I had a friend. Uh, good guy, and uh, his parents were into, you know, at that age, I didn't know what that was, but they had a full-size replica of uh, the statue on Easter Island in their, in their like, lower floor. They were very unique people, and they had a very interesting uh, collection of books, and some of those books were on, like, uh, you know, paganism and spirit, you know, spirit world stuff, but, like, Wiccan, and I wouldn't say straight-up devil-worshipping stuff, but just interesting very alternative books and we're talking about long before the internet long before uh, the, that kind of stuff would be easy to come across but they had stuff from all different cultures and they had uh, a lot of uh, indian statues and uh, not indian like u.s indian but india indians um it's just it was a very interesting place and there was a night that uh, we were staying up as kids and we were uh, you know looking through the books and you know getting spooked because it had things on how to call up demons and make them do your bidding and stuff like that. And, and of course, you know, we're talking about, uh, you know, close to, <laughs> close to 40 years ago now. So a little hard for me to remember all the details, but this gentleman's mom came in and, uh, you know, asked us what we were doing in that room. And we told her what we were trying to do. And she explained to us, you know, the real way to use a Ouija board and the real way to do this and the real way to do that. And again, as a child, not really realizing the fire that we were playing with. Um, she seemed to be quite knowledgeable on that stuff and and had a lot to say about it and was obviously a true believer. And I think maybe it wasn't until the next day or the day after that I started thinking about how that, uh, you know, that that is a real thing and it is something that's scary. And, and like Wandering Jedi touched on there, you know, playing with those Ouija boards, um, messing around, you know, I don't know if it's still popular, but I know when I was in high school, there was a, a group of folks that were into that, you know, pagan, uh, Wiccan lifestyle, especially girls who were into that Wiccan lifestyle. And, uh, you know, the, oh, we're, we're good uh, witches. And, and I can't help but wonder if, you know, these are honestly good people who are just foolish and, uh, and risked opening themselves up to these evil entities because they take advantage of that, that, that playful way that it all comes laid out before you. I mean, a Ouija board's a game. It's sold in the store. So what could the harm possibly be, right? But maybe there is, right? Wandering Jedi following up. I've seen people who are possessed. When you look at them in the eyes, you see someone else at home, but it isn't them. Yes, I've certainly dealt with people who have um, pulled a 180, changed and changed so drastically and so rapidly uh, that uh, you just no longer recognize who they once were. You've seen that you know, in some cases, I say the world has beat them down, but no matter what the reason, if it's drugs, depression, or, um, you know, playing with the fire that we were just talking about, I do believe there's a way for the things to get in and and, uh, and get at people and get at their souls, man. And I, I don't know if the battle is over once that happens or if, uh, or if these things can be temporary, even without, you know, interdiction from uh, religious people. Wes, how you doing, buddy? We will know a lot more with these quantum computers. Musk says he would ask it one question. And Wes says the question is, what's outside the simulation? And I, like, just got chills reading that because, you know, quantum computing, which we touched on in our first season, um, is a, a fascinating and frightening future. I mean, it's uh, such an interesting device that operates in quantum realities, uh, parallel universes. And so... We're going into those parallel universes asking questions or pulling for data, and we're getting back more data than is possible to get in this reality. So it literally is touching. Um, it reminds me of the name of a Star Trek episode. For the world is hollow and I have touched the sky. It feels like we're touching the sky sometimes when we do things like this. Wandering Jedi comments they can attach objects as well, so be careful at garage sales. An acquaintance of mine had to burn a blanket, and it took hours to get it to burn. So I have heard of, like, you know, haunted dolls or haunted items, but I did not know that an item could be possessed, you know, uh, demonic possession and such a thing. Very interesting. Um, I say it's just... To me, that the idea that you could bring home something that had 
you know, bad mojo. You know, I, I being an auto mechanic my whole life, and certainly having owned many vintage automobiles and not knowing really the backgrounds of those things, I have sworn that there have been several cars. Uh, well, one in particular that I felt was cursed, like it just it didn't like me. You know, a, a machinery can't have or shouldn't have that type of uh, <laughs> abilities. But I swear that car didn't like me, and it showed it every chance it got. Very interesting. Super B saying God is shown sending a demon against Saul in 1 Samuel 16 and 18 in order to punish him for his failure to follow God's instructions. So God sending demons himself, you you know, normally I would think that the devil would be the one sending or releasing demons onto the earth. But God is, you know, sometimes known to be a vengeful bro. So uh, if that's uh, if that's in the book, it's there, my friends. Super B showing God as having power to use demons for his own purposes, putting the demons under his divine authority. See that, and that that just weirds me out. But I, you know, I suppose it's possible. It's punishment for you know not obeying the word. I guess. Seven forty one. My dad said he uses a Ouija board once, and it spooked him so bad he broke it into pieces and threw it away. Um, we had a, a similar experience with that. My my friend and and his mother that it spooked me so bad. And we didn't use a Ouija board. We made a Ouija. Um, and that was, you know, part of her talking about how there was a whole process to contacting uh, the other side. And she ran us through it. And I mean, it was probably two or three in the morning. And here's a parent uh, showing us the ways of the dark side pretty much. But it was, uh, it was very, very interesting. I look back on that moment all these years later and still wonder and, and worry if it didn't affect my life in negative ways at least for some period of time. Hmm. Super B saying that Japanese have the One, the Algonquin had the Wendigo. The Wendigo I've heard of, I'm not familiar with the Oni, but uh, yeah, it's like every single culture has uh, has some reference to demons. And uh, the, it was interesting in my reading that I did to prep for the show, that that talk about the man-goat, you know, half man, half goat, uh I, you know, the, 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 one of the places that I lived when I was growing up, the park or the uh, area nature preserve that wasn't too, too far away, um, probably just a few miles walking distance, uh, that was their, you know, their historical story. But you look around the country and there's stories that are very similar to that in, in lots of places of, uh, you know, uh, Devil's Triangle, Devil's Den, Devil's Glen, uh, you know, Devil's Circle, Devil's Triangle lots of places like that where you know i don't know the other side seems to come through and it's not it's not a happy and um yeah and of course i had in that same uh state in that same area in that same house that was where me and my cousin saw um you know something in the woods so and it wasn't you know it wasn't your traditional bigfoot it was a gray animal that was obviously injured but it was on two legs and uh, we often wondered uh, years later when I kind of did the math on that, where, did I see the, uh, you know, the, the half man, half goat? <laughs> I don't know what. Very interesting to think about. Super be saying, oh my God, possessed uh, cars. No doubt. Yeah, they're out there. There is equipment and uh, things that we purchase that just does not want to work. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, if a person who knows nothing about uh, engineering or mechanics you know, get something and, and pays to have it fixed a few times and it just acts up. They just call it a lemon and they move on. But when a mechanic or an engineer is, is uh, able to, you know, repair these things and get them working exactly the way they should, and and they still continue to just give issues that just seem so out of the norm, yeah, you start to wonder about that. Is it is it truly cursed or possessed? Wandering Jedi saying, the thing to remember that uh, Saul betrayed God and sought advice from a witch. Therefore, God removed his protection and Saul was already a target because he was the king of God's people at the time. Okie dokie. All right. So they're fleshing out the story there for folks. Very interesting stuff. I um, hope you guys are enjoying this. It seems like, I don't know if you enjoyed the uh, pre-recorded segments, but I'm trying to make this a little more um, along the lines of the original radio show that I did for all these years. And so in order to do that, I, I just can't do all that show prep live. Normally, if you were going to do this in a radio station, uh, you would have, uh, you know, someone handling the, the board and somebody handling the phones and somebody handling you know, the radio output and all the rest. But because I'm a one man show, uh, it's it's great to have the live part of the conversation live. But I do uh, kind of have to pre-record some of the show. So I hope that uh, I hope that that's not been a turnoff for folks on this season three. 
but uh, that's what's going on there. But back to the story at hand, anybody who has a particular uh, story of a family or a friend that seemed to have been affected, I certainly, uh, have, you know, sharing that story about the, uh, the Ouija board and, and my friend and I, you know, showed no difference after that night, but often wondered, you know, literally felt like I was playing with fire when I had the chance to think about it. So Wandering Jedi saying is, I wonder what that D quantum computer is actually contacting. You know, that's see the thing that the, the, the D wave thing freaks me out so much because yeah, we're, we know that it is operating in a, in an alternative reality and the more qubits or D wave bits or whatever it's called. So it's, is how many realities it's being able to pull at any one second, but it's not just pulling one. If it's a one bit quantum computer, it's not just going into one parallel universe. It's just going to one at a time. But when you start looking at parallel universes, how many parallel universes does it contact that have, um, you know, had something else uh, evolve as the dominant species on the planet or or planets that have been taken over or destroyed. I mean, there's, you know, there's so many versions of reality when you talk about an infinite multiverse, uh, which apparently is, you know, moving towards being proven as a reality that we live in a, at the very least, by using these quantum computers, we've proven that we live in uh, a universe where there are parallel dimensions all around us. So, how if there's an infinite number then literally every choice ever made has played out infinitely and that is a lot of uh that's bigger than my brain can really handle but yeah how many of those are bad places <laughs> how many of those things um yeah are, are taking us you know to bad places and i always love to bring up the mandela effect but you know did we open that when we asked that first question in a parallel universe and start I don't know, some kind of phasic shift around our entire planet where we're phasing in and out of these slightly different parallel universes. And of course, if you've ever read uh, 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 The Sound of Silence, which is about going back to the dinosaur age and the guy accidentally kills a butterfly, uh, I think it was made into a movie actually called The Butterfly Effect, maybe I think it was called, uh, that, uh, that, yeah, that, that, you know, we've, we're sliding between those, those worlds that just one little thing changed, you know, maybe, maybe one guy in <laughs> 10,000 years ago, um, you know, took a left instead of a right. And, and so it's, it's just a little bit different. Yeah. Butterfly effect. That's right. Super B. Yeah. I'm going as deep as I can here. I mean, it's a, it's an interesting story. I love, I love talking about the possibilities and that's what the, the show has also been. It's also been kind of big on over the years. Uh, Wandering Jedi, the Nazis from World War II were uh, were deep into the occult and they were getting advanced technologies from entities, the Nazi Bell and the Foo Fighters. Yeah, so Foo Fighters, I mean, they never came up with a, uh, well, they never released a, a confirmed reason for Foo Fighters, but we have still photographs and video from cockpits of uh, fighter planes and, and bombers with the Foo Fighters. I mean, those things... That's a real phenomenon, and it wasn't just experienced by Americans. Um, and yeah, I've read a book called Na uh, Nazis in the Occult, and they were really into some weird stuff. You know, I know that Hitler was not a, a you know, I mean, not a good person by any means, uh, but I didn't realize the uh, depravity. I mean, this guy was just, he was looking for power anywhere he could get it, and I swear he'd have shaken hands with the devil himself from, from reading that book. He didn't care. He just wanted absolute power. So uh, very frightening that, that, yeah, those guys are going on expeditions everywhere. You know, the Indiana Jones uh, quadrilogy or whatever you want to call that uh, really digs deep into the fact that the Nazis were, you know, in all those things. They're looking for the, you know, the the key to eternal life and, uh, and the Ark of the Covenant. So very interesting stuff. Dallas excuse me, Dallas Rife, the property where my parents uh, live and still, I uh, live still, and I grew up in, in West Virginia. There's no telling how many Indians buried there from so many years ago. It would make the hair stand up on your neck, uh, some of the things I saw and experienced. Yeah, so, you know, and I think it's, it's something that you really have to think about anywhere in the country is wherever you're standing, chances are something, <laughs> something big happened there at some point in history. And, uh, yeah, as far as Indian burial grounds, we have Revolutionary War, Civil War, 
battles. We have, uh, you know, American Indian Wars across the country. We have uh, just so much stuff that has happened here just on our land. But, yeah, then you go around worldwide and you... I, you know, here's a question, and this is totally off topic, but it's just something I, I was watching uh, something today with my wife uh, briefly before the show. And we talked about this. Uh, so somebody builds the pyramids and, uh, you know, the Sphinx, and they build this awesome city, and they have uh, emperor kings and all the rest, and and they have all this stuff. And, it, you know, that's great. <laughs> you know, obviously civilizations come and go, and I, I equate this to, you know, America. So let's say America... Uh, peaks out prosperous and then slowly declines and then dissolves it just doesn't make it you know it happens all the time countries come and they go and uh that's all fine and dandy but uh, people wouldn't leave the the country like the city would still be populated and even if it was you know bombed out or burned out or whatever you want to call it or or poisoned out or whatever eventually people would move back in and by eventually i don't mean many thousands of years i mean you know tens of years after whatever went down went down assuming there were people left on the planet to inhabit it but you look at those pyramids and this beautiful picture behind that i'm showing tonight and what happened to those people man like where did they go they're there they build all this or we we like to think that you know if we listen to modern historians the egyptians built this about 3300 years ago instead of you know, if you listen to elder, uh, you know, theorists, it was 12,000 years ago. And that might make, you know, ex might make sense if it was 12,000 years ago and the Great Flood came and the Egyptians that we know the history of moved into that stuff. But again, where did they go? Okay. You know, they were there. And then th there's so many uh, places in that, in that part of the world that are just abandoned. And it's one thing to abandon, you know, a, a small town, but to abandon what is clearly the crowning achievement and the largest city that they ever had it seems a little weird to me that they just disappeared. Uh, well, Super B saying weird stuff is putting it mildly. No doubt, you know, but that's, and this is, you know, I'm sure a lot of folks that come here from Farpoint are like, wait, I came here to listen to CB stuff. <laughs> Farm tractor videos, what is going on? But it's this, you know, this is kind of Art Bell's thing, man. You know, it's, uh, I'm not trying to push any uh, uh, opinions on anybody. It's just a cool discussion. I love talking about it. I love hearing people bounce ideas and, uh, you know, come up with some crazy ideas as to what could possibly cause them. some of the cool things we deal with in this life. Wandering Jedi saying the Lucifer telescope is owned by the Vatican and, and has that can see entities in the sky. The optics are different than standard telescopes. I have not heard of that, but I will certainly, certainly uh, be checking into that. Super B saying climate change forced them to move away from the Valley of the Kings. The Nile shifted. Okay, so yeah, I can I can understand that. I, I get. I mean, that makes sense to me because obviously, and I, I oh man, see if I can get in trouble for this. But for people who are always like, oh man, man-made global climate change, I always point to the pyramids and I'm like, do you think they built those things in a desert? Because nobody's building anything in a desert. They built that in the in a valley that was beautiful and lush, and they lived there because they were able to farm and grow animals and everything else. And so, yeah, you're right. Climate change did turn that into a desert. I just figured with the mass, uh, you know, and I, maybe I'm giving them more credit than is due, but I figure, you know, with the amount of modern technology we have, we have places like, you know, um, Vegas, you know, where my friend, uh, one of my friends lives, Bryman. And, uh, you know, so we are able to support a massive amount of people in a desert, but that's in our era. I just assume... Perhaps that they would have been able to come up with those solutions as well. But apparently by the time those changes were occurring, that empire was on its, you know, it was, was failing anyway. So theories in that anyway, that's, that's my idea there. But yeah, very good point, Super B. Wandering Jedi, I'm definitely going to be looking up that Lucifer telescope. Now I'm like, you know, that's all I can think about. So, but back to the topic tonight, the demons, it's, uh, it's just really interesting, and I don't know if anyone else has any uh, personal experiences with uh, demonic uh, possession or people who were, uh, you know, changed so suddenly or people that went through that kind of stuff or people that, that felt like, you know, and, I, and there was an episode uh, years ago where I interviewed a young lady who uh, who felt that she was possessed or at least she had a, an evil spirit that was following her and causing her trouble and i mean it freaked us out like i i didn't want to be a, i didn't really want to be in that show because 
you know, I'm like, what if this, this thing latches on to, to me, you know? And, and so a lot of this stuff that we can't see, we can't feel, we're not a hundred percent sure that it's real, but is there anybody out there that really wants to take the chance, uh, and flaunt that stupidity, you know, flaunt, I'm going to, I'm going to mess with the Ouija board. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to allow, uh, bad things into my life. You know, I, I don't, I'm not one of those people. Uh, Wandering Jedi, they are using lasers to heat up areas of the ocean to manipulate weather along with harp and geoengineering. So I've seen the harp array. I'm still not exactly convinced as to what that's doing. I don't know if that's just like the world's weirdest listening post. Like maybe it's just a, a geosynchronous spot that just picks it up from all around the world. I've certainly heard the conspiracy theories that that is part of geoengineering. And I wouldn't put it past us to play with that. I mean, it's it's just in human nature, it seems, to poke at every hornet's nest we seem to find. So what could possibly go wrong with trying to manipulate the weather, right? I can't possibly see a problem with that. Just a global ice age, you know, accidentally triggered by dicking around with warming up the ocean, right? <laughs> Uh, Super B, I'm still pissed about the burning of the library at Alexandria. Yeah, buddy. You know, that is the loss of prehistory history and uh, all of the things that we will never be able to verify burned at the burning of that library. And that is a tragedy, too, my friend. It's uh, all the knowledge of the pre-flood world, uh, other than what we find just bits and fragments of, is lost and that's where it got lost. I mean, it's amazing that we at least can pinpoint the moment that we forgot our history. I uh, wonder in the future, Super B, if hopefully not in my lifetime or yours, but uh, I wonder how far in the future before we get to experience that again with everything that we have currently digital. Uh, when does the time come when that giant bright flash, that EMP, that solar flare, that carding event uh, just wipes out all the data on Earth, and we get that hard reset all over again. I, I'm very, I'm very worried about that happening. Kelsey, I had an ex-girlfriend with borderline personality disorder, and I swear she would become possessed. Her eyes would change, and she would look like a different person. I too, Calcius, have seen a, a, a been, been with a girl uh, for you know a month or two, and I'm sure we've all dated crazy girlfriends uh, but this one was like genuinely just like that where it would be uh, super sweet and clingy and friendly and then it would turn into a very vicious very evil vile attitude and uh and i wonder about that like who have you led into your life that has caused this and that sudden change in that demeanor and look they literally looked like a different person when they would become that way needless to say hopefully like you <laughs> moved on as quickly as possible right River Rider, there are some weird signals on shortwave. Uh, there are signals communicated uh, to the living from the unliving. Food for thought. So certainly, so all 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 life is energy, right? Everything is energy in some form or another. You take a you know a piece of wood and you burn it, it creates you know a different type of energy. Um, so we, it's certainly possible as spirits, which would also be a form of energy that they are using yet another type of energy, which is radio waves, to try to communicate or to do something else. Who knows what they're up to, right? We can only guess. She said, Tony, uh, Wandering Jedi, it's all magnets. Interesting. Calcius, uh, we were talking once, and she said she doesn't have an internal monologue and said it was weird. I could think with the words in my head. Whoa, really, Calcius? So she said she did not... Like the little voice, like when we talk to ourselves, like when we rationalize things, like that kind of stuff. She was saying she didn't ever have that voice. She just, that's very primal, man. That's like, that's the loss of, of what makes us human, man. That is, that is actually really freaky, man. That's scary. Wandering Jedi, I wouldn't doubt it if the library of Alexandria was looted by a certain secret societies and then burned thereby hiding knowledge but preserving it for their own purpose. A lot of people think the Catholic Church is hiding that kind of information. Um, you know, the Vatican has a lot of secrets and uh and they're they're a very old society. It's I would love uh, the opportunity to to uh, to take a look at what they have, but it, it does surprise me and upset me that even in the modern era that they hide so much uh information that they have. That do find that um, to be a unfortunate. 
Wandering Jedi reminds me of the movie In the Name of the Rose. Okay, so I'll have to check that one out too. I haven't heard of that one, Super B. So, uh, now this is a very interesting conversation. I don't know how much longer I'll go live, but I do have a lot left. Wow, we've already been at it for a while here, haven't we? That's good. This was way past my bedtime when we got it started, guys. I think I've mentioned to you before. I usually do it at 7. I think what's I'm finding most comical about tonight is that uh, everyone's like, man, you got to do it much later. you got to do it much later. So I rolled in here about an hour and a half later than I usually do it, and there's half the people. So. So we're back. Hopefully. Are we back? Yeah. We're back online. Uh, sorry about that if uh, there's people that were not able to get back online there. Oh, I'm having some issues for sure. Are we there yet? Yeah, we're back. Let me try refreshing this with a pop out. Uh, if somebody would. Uh, Hey, there we go. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I'm not sure what happened there. Actually, it's still showing some issues, but <laughs> we're not finished. I'm sorry, man. So I don't know if some internet problem on my end, which is uh, uh, which is which is usually not too bad, but maybe something's going on. We do have some storms in the area, but let me try to catch up. Uh, Calcius, I think there are some people among us with no. Let me move that over. With no internal conscience guiding their actions, they are basically empty vessels that are able to become possessed by evil hyperdimensional monsters or beings. Apparently, uh, I have never, and I'm not going to say I am uh, disappointed by this, I have never run into somebody who said they didn't have a small voice in their head that, you know, that they work things through. But I would be horrified. Uh, to have to deal with somebody like that. And now I feel like I'm going to be asking people that for years to come. Hey, man, you know that little voice in your head? And they're like, no, I don't have that. I'm going to probably just walk away. <laughs> Calcius, some entities, entities some call demons. And they act in reality as to cause pain and bad emotions. Yeah, so they that's that's some of the stuff that, you know, no matter what um, religious or, or cultural background you research, demonic, uh, you know, entities it seems like they all get off on that they get they get either into somebody and and ruin their lives and feed off that misery uh very very interesting and and uh very interesting i love it yeah wandering jedi's talking about that movie i'll definitely have to check that one out dallas yeah, we're back i'm sorry about that oh there's a book on it okay yeah i've been reading an interesting book series right now myself here i'll have to add I'm probably about a year backed up on books. Luther Watson thought it was on my side. Seems like it since I got my own router. My internet has become suspect. <laughs> Figures, right? You buy your own and the company starts messing with you. Maybe a spirit cut the feed, says River Rider. Hey, it's possible. Good to see you in here, River. I don't think I've ever had either you or Luther in here, but I'm a, I'm, I'm happy to have you in. Hopefully you're enjoying the show. Wander and Jedi, the devil is the quintessential narcissistic and sociopath. So people like that are on the same frequency, and they are easier to possess. So, uh, yeah, I, I kind of wonder about that as well. So um, the narcissist attitude, the sociopath. And so sociopaths are the ones that are like, you know, hey, they seem very uh, friendly and outgoing, but the whole time they're plotting your demise. So it wouldn't surprise me that a demon would be like, hey, man, we should work together on this, you know, because that's kind of right along the same lines. You're very right about that. Uh, Dallas is asking, what do you think about Romans 8-29-30 uh, among several verses about being uh, predestined, uh, called? I, You know, and that's a very interesting subject in itself. So the idea that we are born with a... a you know, a destiny, a, you know, that everything is predetermined. Um, I, I don't want to believe that. I feel, I feel like that we are on our own out here as far as, 
I think it's like, it's just training for the spirit, my friend. Like this life, if we can avoid the pitfalls, if we can avoid being bad people, if we, uh, you know, do good to others and, and try to not be bad even when we're called upon to do so, that, uh, that that is like passing the test, you know, that that's that when we pass, you know, when we go on to heaven or hell, that whatever is on the other side of that is uh, not on the other side of heaven or hell, but whatever's on the other side of this is is not so predetect like that we weren't predestined to arrive there because I want to I want to believe that if uh, you know that I have a chance to redeem myself that that I may be born and at some point have to do bad things or be a bad person, but that I have my life uh, at least as long as I'm allowed to be here on earth to uh, make up for it and uh, to be a good person. And so, you know, I, you know, find me a person who's never done a bad thing in their life and I'll find you a liar. So, uh, you know, I'm sure we all have things that we wish we had done differently. Uh, I think not having a predestined life is um, is is what I really want to think I, I don't I want to think that I'm free to 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 be a good or a bad person and, and avoid the you know the pitfalls of man Kelsey it was saying it was scary she made fun of me for hearing a voice in my head I started reading and found a psychology today article that said only 25 percent of people have internal thoughts I can link if that's allowed dude uh, Calcius if you can't link it here if you would email that to my Farpoint Farms email address, I would love to read that because I am like shocked and stunned. You know, I've never asked anyone that. And now you have really, uh, and then that's why I love this show, man, because that's like new ideas, new thoughts. That is, uh, that's incredible. That is, I had no idea. Like I, I I'm always, you know, I'll use, the, I, I don't mean this in a negative way. I'm always plotting and scheming, you know, I'm always calculating, um, the decision to come to move to the mountains was, you know, such a calculated effort. And yeah, I mean, gosh, heck, sometimes I'm talking out loud to myself, but yeah, if we didn't have that little voice inside of our head, giving us the pros and cons of a situation, I can imagine how easy it would be for someone to, uh, to act in the nature of an animal, a pure animal, something that just acts on instinct. It's terrible. Right on Dallas. Yeah. Yeah, man. I just, I don't think we're, we're headed straight, you know, from birth to the, to the, you know, the, the bad places. Hey, James, good to see you in here, my friend. Oh, that's all right. You kind of missed the, the meat of it, but, uh, it's been an interesting show. I'm, I'm really shocked at, uh, the conversation. We've taken a little bit of a detour here and there, but most of it's been very interesting and learning. I think the most interesting thing I've learned in the last year or so was <laughs> this whole thing about not having that inner voice, that inner and maybe, for all I know, that's what separates you know, good from evil. So, very interesting. Well, folks, it's uh, it's been a cool first half of the show. I don't know if y'all are ready, but uh, so we are part of the twenty five percent. Yeah, and maybe that's maybe that's what sets some people apart. Critical thinking doesn't seem to be such a. a, a <laughs> a big part of our society all of a sudden just watching the so-called news it just seems so crazy some of the stuff that goes on and maybe that's because there's no critical thinking there's no one going hmm maybe if i did this it might be bad you know i don't know i am shocked i'm shocked it definitely does explain a lot <laughs> Uh, Dallas saying so many interesting things in the Bible. It is literally the greatest book. And there is so much we will never know in this realm. Indeed. And think I miss, uh, we've talked about this years ago, but Dallas, uh, the Bible has been uh, edited so many times by powerful people since it was first uh, written. It makes me wonder just what is missing from the Bible that might explain so many of the problems and questions that we have right now. That, you know, the King James edition or the King James Bible is called that because quite literally King James kind of went through there with a, uh, you know, a magic marker or, <laughs> or whatever they were using back then and was like, nah, let's leave this part out. Let's change this part, um, you know, to use the to his advantage to, to rule. And, uh, and so I've always wondered like what the more pure version of the Bible, uh, before, you know, if we could go back, you know, a thousand years even, uh, would, would, 
you know, obviously the similarities would definitely be there, but it, I wonder what we're missing out on. I wonder what parts uh, were deleted uh, from bad people pretty much getting their fingers on a good book. Fascinating stuff tonight, folks. Well, I think I'm going to leave the conversation on demons on that. Um, I'm going to go back to uh, pre-recorded stuff. I've got three great stories lined up, and then we'll say goodnight. But I do want you, if you would be so kind as to stick around, and I'll be happy to comment and talk with you all in the comment section. And uh, let me know what you like and don't like about this new format, and, and, uh, and I'll make some more modifications if I can. We're probably going to have a six-episode run this year, so uh, we'll look to wrap it up probably sometime in um, late September, early uh, October. And the big, uh, the next show, we're going to do something a little bit fun. So we've had two shows where we've talked about uh, demons and uh, you know the root of all evil. So let's have some fun next week and let's do uh, let's do great horror and sci-fi movies. Let's just have fun. So if you if you're into the show and liking it, you'll come in next week, and the main topic will be that. We'll still cover the news, we'll still cover some cool stories, and uh, but that'll be the topic. A little bit more lighthearted, a little more fun, maybe not quite as deep a thought. You know what I mean? But still good stuff. So <laughs> I've had a great show. Thank you, Wandering Jedi. You've saying you're having a great show. Let me go back to a song, and we'll come back. And I got three stories: the story of the paranormal, story of the UFOs, and just a really interesting story. Right after this. I guess that about wraps it up for our main story. So we're going to go on to some stories. We've got three stories lined up for you tonight. Three stories of the paranormal. One, of course, involving UFOs. One, of course, involving ghosts. And one, well, one that's just kind of strange. Our first story... An interesting story of the paranormal, if I do say so myself. The Guardian is the name of this story, and it is a true story. I'd been on my phone with my then boyfriend, and he said something that made me think he was chauvinistic or not a nice person. And I remember telling him that if he knew anything about me, he knew exactly where I was going to go. I hung up the phone and got in my car and drove to the park. The sun was kind of down below the tree line, but it wasn't dark yet. And I pulled into the parking lot thinking to myself, how strange that I had come here. I also thought it was weird that there were two cars pulled side by side talking to each other. When I got out, the guy in the truck just stared at me in a horrible way. You know, when someone just looks at you like they're looking through you as if you don't exist. Well, this is weird, I thought to myself. It's late, and no one's ever here. But then I thought, whatever, they're leaving, I don't care, I've got my own problems, and continued about my business. I only took my keys with me because I didn't want my big purse banging around. I headed across the field, which you have to cross through to get to the woods because there's no trail. I was taking my time and calming down, and then I realized it had gotten really quiet. I didn't hear the birds or the squirrels, I didn't hear anything anymore. I just heard something big moving through the woods. I thought to myself, maybe it's a dog. But then I heard voices. 
the first voice is a male's voice. And he said, I know I saw her go in this way. She couldn't have gotten that far. Then a second voice comes, and it's quieter, and it says, shh, she'll hear you. Okay, I think to myself, so there are two men in the woods, and they're looking for something, obviously. And I keep thinking it must be their dog. It must be that they lost their dog. And then I thought they wouldn't try to sneak up on it. And so I stood there frozen, because that's the kind of person I am. I could hear them getting closer to me, and I don't know how long I stood there waiting for them to get to me, but I was completely frozen. And then I heard the other voice. It just said, go to the river now. I don't know if I was more scared of the fact that there's some disembodied voice or person talking to me, or that there are two men in the woods looking for me. I listened to the voice because I didn't really have any other options. I took off towards the river, and I made a ton of noise because I was just going to go as fast as I thought I could, and the voice came back and said, No. Quietly. I got to the river and jumped down the embankment. I squished myself against it, squeezing down the smallest, tightest ball I could. The voice kept telling me to stay, and I just sat there hoping whatever was in the woods was going to leave and that I wasn't going to have some kind of breakdown. I kept hearing them moving through the woods and I could tell they had split off. As I sat there, the voice just kept telling me to stay and stay quiet over and over again like it was trying to comfort me. Suddenly I could hear what sounded like someone was right above me and if I leaned out they could see me, but I had to look. I just tilted my head up a tiny bit and I could see the tips of these construction boots hanging over the edge. I could see hanging next to them was this dirty old rope, just swinging next to them, swinging. I don't even think I thought anything, I was so scared. I just tried not to breathe. It felt like hours, but I knew it couldn't have been that long. The voice was even completely silent at this point. There was nothing but me hearing this man breathing. He finally, at some point, started to walk away, and the voice kept telling me to wait. So I waited, and finally the voice said, Go. Now go to the field, and go now. It was screaming at me so loud, so I ran through the woods and just got out to the field, far, far from the cars in the street. It was getting dark, and I could see the parking lot, but it was so far away. I'm running, and I hear footsteps running. They're, at first... They're farther away, but they're so much faster than I am, barreling at me. And there was nothing. I fully expected to see at least one of the men, but it was silent. The only thing I could think of was that the footsteps must have belonged to the voice. And I hear it again, screaming at the top of its lungs that I need to run right now. And the footsteps come back, and they're in pace with me, running next to me through the field. I had a thousand crazy thoughts because none of this made any sense but finally i get to my car and i see both the cars were parked in different places and nobody's in them i refuse to look behind me if there hadn't been a voice i probably would have been a missing persons case it got me out of there i don't know what that voice was who that voice was or how that voice found me but without that voice i wouldn't be here today to tell you the story i like this I like this story because it's a guardian angel story. There are good spirits and there are bad spirits. And tonight's topic of demons certainly brings up the worst in spirits. But there are also a lot of guardian angels out there. I have no doubt that at least one and probably a whole lot more times in my life, a guardian angel has looked out for me. There have been times when I've asked deceased family members for help. And I swear I feel like I have received that help. So reading a story like this doesn't surprise me. It's completely believable. And we all know that things like this do happen in this world. So I thought I'd share that with you here on the Midnight Cafe. I'm going to take a second and then we'll get back to it with another cool story.
Our next story tonight, another true story, of course, is titled, Was it People or Was it Aliens? Another abduction case or another case of, uh, well, a close encounter of the something kind. Doug Averill grew up as one of eight boys on his parents' sprawling dude ranch in the Flathead Lake Lodge in rural Montana. As a teen, the Averill boys ran wild. We rode around like a little gang of cowboys, he remembers. They'd saddle up and head off to check cattle on the three giant tracts of land the family managed. Anyway, in the summer of 1969, the brothers came across a ghastly sight. There, on the ground, there were three dead cows neatly arranged in a circle. No obvious wounds were visible, but their reproductive organs had been removed. And there was never any blood. It was almost like it had been surgically removed, Averill remembers. During this decade, Americans were obsessed with aliens. The write-ups in local newspapers postured that uh, perhaps this was the work of extraterrestrials. People mused that aliens had taken the reproductive organs for testing. But one day, Averill and his friends came across a lance in their path. Attached to it was a cryptic note with a threatening message. That's when we thought, it's got to be people doing this, he said. But then things got even stranger. Over the next few days, a series of odd events unfolded. First, the brothers stopped at a local bar to grab a hamburger, leaving their horses in the back of a stock truck. The horses were packed tightly, and the Averills were only gone for a few minutes. When they came back, the horses packed into the middle of the truck was mysteriously cut with no signs of a struggle. We had no idea how they possibly could have gotten that horse unloaded without unloading the others and injured it and then reloaded it. It just didn't make any sense. The next day, a new wrangler on the ranch fell off his horse and was badly injured. They'd all been riding together, but not a single other member of the crew saw the accident. It was the weirdest thing, Averill says. The man's injuries were so severe that he was left permanently disabled. Finally, the last terrible thing happened. An old camp cook drove out to meet the brothers and ride for the day. But when he arrived, the tailgate on his stock truck had somehow gone missing, even though it had been there when he loaded it up. His horse Betsy had fallen out of the truck and been dragged behind the vehicle for who knows how long. They had to put her down on the spot. To be honest, it just killed him to see what had happened to Betsy. We probably should have put him down, too, remembers Averill. Those three events were just boom, 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 three in a row, and they were all so weird and all tied together because they were right after we saw that spear. Three things, like three dead cows left in a circle. Averill used to tell stories from that summer around the campfire quite a lot, but over the years he's gotten new stories, and so they've been shifted out of rotation. Besides, they're awfully grim. But he recently got a call about a downed buffalo, a bull. And it was out in one of the most remote parts of his ranch. A neighbor had seen a pack of 16 wolves. Normally, wolves don't bother buffalo. But 16 of them? I thought, well, maybe. So he went to investigate, and there, lying in the snow-covered field, was the bull. There were no bullet holes or teeth marks or gashes on its corpse. Even stranger, scavenging animals and birds hadn't touched it. Not even the buzzards, which is really unusual. One other thing was amiss. Its reproductive organs were gone, and there wasn't a single footprint in the snow around it, or anything along the mile-long walk into the ranch from the nearest road. Ask Averill whether he thinks he's dealing with aliens or humans, and he'll tell you he's pretty sure it's humans. But I'd almost rather it was aliens, he adds. After that summer back in the late 60s, seeing what humans were capable of, he'd pick an alien any day. And I find this story interesting because he is blaming it on humans, and I'm almost wondering if maybe this is a little bit of both. You know, uh, sick individuals, but also the cover-ups. You know, we use that as a cover-up. We use patsies or, you know, I always call them useful idiots. Well, we use these people who are up to no good to cover our tracks when we ourselves are up to no good. It happens quite a bit in, in, uh, in the modern era. But he's convinced that it's humans. I'm not so sure. I've certainly read an awful lot and watched a, a lot of documentaries on um, 
damaged, like these these animals, these livestock that have been damaged, that have had all the blood sucked out of them, or they're missing, they have surgical cuts, and they're missing organs, or uh, or things of that nature, where it's it's like they were testing them, you know, they're taking pieces, and uh, I mean, think about what we would do. What's the if we rolled in on a new planet, we create a warp drive and roll in on a new planet, tons of species there. We didn't know if these species were going to, you know, just think of the viruses and the illnesses that another world might bring human immune systems. And so uh, the thought that they might take up parts and do tests and, and inspect and dissect, that makes perfect sense. I think I could see us as a, as a race doing the same thing. So very interesting, very interesting stuff. I love this kind of stuff on the Midnight Cafe. And another great short story coming right up after this very short break. I'll see you in a sec. story in a night. In a small Ballard apartment, Cleveland, Tony Harmon's past finally caught up with him. Now he's ready to tell his story. 56 years ago, Harmon says he unknowingly swept up in a poltergeist phenomenon, a Virginia boy living in a house that became the center of some inexplicable event straight out of a horror movie. Flying books, a levitating mattress, cups and saucers sailing to crash and shatter. And yes, you can discount it all, as stories of the paranormal are often discounted. But the thing is, there were some really credible witnesses and media accounts. Over several days in 1962 in a seaside city of Portsmouth, what happened to Harmon and his family was covered in the Virginia Pilot newspaper. The Associated Press and other publications also carried the story. And a reporter who covered the events declared he was reassessing his disbelief in the supernatural. Harmon is now 70, and he's definitely lived a rough-and-tumble life since those many decades ago in the Pacific Northwest. He was homeless for a time before finding a place at the Cheryl Chow Court for seniors in Ballard. What finally has Harmon talking about his past is a woman named Mary Brett, 73, of Dade County, Florida. She also grew up in Portsmouth and was a teen when the inexplicable events took place in her hometown. Now retired from a job as a health care recruiter for hospitals and agencies, Brett decided to dig into some events from her childhood and track down Harmon. I had so many questions, he says. It became a passion that took up to four years. She found relatives of Harmon and looked up his school records, looked up newspaper articles on microfish, ads in newspapers, and researched local libraries. She even paid for a background search. Brett finally got lucky when she posted on a Facebook page about the Portsmouth history, asking if anybody knew Harmon's whereabouts. Someone on that Facebook page told her that Harmon himself was on Facebook. On July 2017, Harmon posted on his Facebook page, I will always carry around with me until the day I die, the true story. Brett and Harmon began talking by phone and mailing each other. She thinks his story should be told beyond his 12 Facebook friends. And so here we are. In September of 1962, when he was 13 years old, Harmon was living with a great-great-grandparents Anne and Charlie Doherty in a single-story rental home. And he remembers the first incident. I was coming home from school. Some guys were chasing me, probably because I had girls hanging around me all the time, says Harmon. I ran up the stairs and onto the porch, and the screen door was open, so I dropped my books on the floor. I could smell my grandma cooking in the back, fresh apple pie, and then, 
the books that I had just dropped flew right over the top of my head. My grandma said, what are you doing throwing books all over? I said, I didn't throw them. She thought I was fibbing and sat me in the corner. Then, the next afternoon, I was sitting on the floor of the living room, and grandfather and grandma had their pipes. They both smoked those old-fashioned corncob pipes. And they had the tobacco can sitting up on the mantel to keep me from getting at it. And I was sitting there, wondering where I could get tobacco, when the can flipped over, rolled onto the floor, and spilled. My grandmother was stunned. There was no explanation. I didn't know what I had done, and it excited me. It made my heart pound. The events continued and became talked about in the neighborhood, he goes on to say. Helen Davis, 91, lived across the street from the Dohertys. She remembers that life in Portsmouth. She and another neighbor were walking home from church, and she remembers the following. Something needs to be done, Davis, who was interviewed by the Seattle Time, remembers her neighbor telling her. Things are being thrown out onto the street. We walked over. And the grandfather was so glad when we came over. He hadn't slept in two nights. Salt and pepper shakers, glass, broken dishes, everything was all over the front yard. A rocking chair in one of the rooms started rocking while we were standing there talking to him about it. The Philadelphia pilot reporter went to check out the house after these strange reports made their way to him. In his front page article the next day, it began with, I didn't believe in ghosts until Saturday. I went to a house at 949 Florida Ave and got goose pimples while dodging flying household objects that crashed into bits on the floor. I didn't believe this nonsense until Saturday. Now, I'm not so sure. I saw weird things happen, but I just don't know what caused them. Phillips has since died, but the photographer on the story, William Abrajol, 83, of Virginia Beast, also clearly remembers that day. He says, basically, we were inside the house, walking down the hall, and stuff hit the wall and broke. A dish, a glass. It was crazy. It was surreal. I had no idea where it was coming from. There was no one in those rooms. He and Phillips looked into the room where the stuff was coming from. There wasn't anyone in there. There was one window, and it was closed. We searched. We could not find a single explanation. The story that Sunday further spread the publicity, and on that day, the Portsmouth police cordoned off the street. They estimated that up to 10,000 people went to Florida Avenue that Sunday to take a look at the house. In the afternoon, cars were arriving in the suburbs at a rate of 600 per hour, it was reported. Harmon and his great-grandparents moved in with relatives. They never returned to the rental home. Harmon still believes he was actually the one that was responsible for the flying objects, although he doesn't understand how or why. After the events of that September, while staying with relatives, Harmon says he decided to move a pencil that was on the table. I put it right on its edge, he said. He says about these powers he had, I stopped it. I knew right then and there I was doing it no more. Now think about this. So we have a guy who may have been experiencing a poltergeist. A poltergeist could be an, an evil entity that infects the house, or usually a poltergeist uh, attaches itself to one person. So are we looking at an entity that has attached itself to a young man and has caused these issues? Or are we looking at a situation where Esper, he, I mean, this guy has extrasensory perception or a additional function in his brain that during that time when we start to become, you know, we start to go through um, a puberty, that the, sometimes these kids experience the ability to do things like that. It's a proven fact people are able to use their mind to bend spoons, Certainly, there's a proven fact that people are uh, capable of uh, using ESP to uh, you know, guess what's in somebody's hand or see what's behind a wall. These things the CIA looked into, these are, these are not the paranormal. These are uh, unexplained, but these are things that have been proven to be real. It's a fascinating story to me, and it's a fascinating concept, and perhaps on another episode of the Midnight Cafe, we'll spend the whole night talking about poltergeists and and the uh, not just poltergeists, but espers, you know, ESP, and and the whole Sears and uh, what is it? There's made a movie about it some years ago, Men Who Stare at Goats, about the military's uh, secret program to uh, find people who are Sears. These things exist in our world, my friends. And uh, a story like this will really get your head rolling around the ideas: Is it a a, a foreign entity, or is it just you and me not being able to use? 
even a fraction of what we are capable of doing here on this earth. I'll leave you with that thought tonight, my friends. It has been a great episode. I think it's been probably one of the best in four or five years, to be quite honest with you. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the stories. I've enjoyed the time. I've enjoyed the comments section. I've enjoyed the phone calls. It's been great to be here. This is our 21st year at the Midnight Cafe, and it's been cool to do it live once again. I'll leave you with this one last song, and my friends, take care. Mm -hmm.